Hi guys, this is the first book, or first book, first video for the 50 book challenge of 2010. So the books that I'm going to show you in this video are just ones that I'm going to use. Some of three are from the library and the rest, the other nine are just ones I had bought in that I just never got to reading. So they're not in any order or anything except the first one, which is this one, Chasing Windmills by Katherine Ryan Hyde. But before I talk about this briefly, I just want to say that tomorrow I'm going to Borders, so I'll probably be having a haul. I will, no, not probably. I will put up a haul, but I do want to get to the Unwind by Nail Schusterman that Alex and Laura had reviewed. So if I do find that at my Borders, I will definitely make that number two, but back to number one, for sure, because it's, I'm halfway done with it because I was reading this morning. So, and it's now the afternoon, so, um... I started reading this, and I'll just read you the back, and then later tonight I'll probably have a review up of this, because I'm almost done with it. It said, Both Sebastian and Maria live in worlds ruled by fear. Sebastian, a lonely 17-year-old, is suffering, is suffocating under his dominant father's control. Maria, a young mother of two, is trying to keep peace at home despite her boyfriend's abuse. When their eyes meet across the subway car one night, these two strangers find a connection that neither can explain or ignore. They dream of a new future and agree to run away together, only to find that each has kept a, minor, a major secret from the other. In this tremendously moving novel, Catherine Ryan Hyde shows us how two people trapped by life circumstances can break free and find a place in the world where love is genuine and selfless. Okay. I'm pretty far on it. I'm on chapter 10. And there's only 262 pages, so this will be done by today. So check, look for this, um review that I'll be putting up on this book, and I'll talk more about it. But another book from the library I got, Mercy by Jody Pico. This is just basically about a man, a uh, police chief, Cameron McDonald, who has to arrest his cousin Jamie for murdering his wife. It, well, he admitted to murdering his wife because she was terminally ill, and, she did, and he did it out of mercy. So um, this will be probably a good... Um, thriller and with good characters, because her books always have good characters. And then this book is kind of, was kind of cool. It's Right, Wrong, and Risky, a Dictionary of Today's American Dig by Mark Davidson. This book just caught my eye, because I love reading about words and stuff, and learning about words, because I love reading. And this is just talks about, it's like a dictionary, it's like how we use words in our society. Like, for example, um, let me find, cannot or cannot, and then it kind of, like, talks a little bit about it, so that's kind of interesting, or, like, bug or insect, like, that kind of thing, this just sounds, it sounds, um, have, I have, but I haven't read them, these aren't in any order except probably The Lottery and other short stories by Shirley Jackson, because I bought this last weekend, and I was looking for it, because I wanted to, because I love this short story, The Lottery, I remember reading it in high school, and I was like, this is the most bizarre story, but I love it. So I was excited that my bookstore um, had this copy in, which was really cool because I wanted it. So this will probably be in probably the top ten of the challenge. So I know that for sure. For sure, for sure. Um, and then I think Laura had reviewed this. Or not reviewed it. I think she read it. Or she might have reviewed it. I don't remember. But the A Million Little Pieces by James Frey. Um, I bought this a long time ago at a book sale. Definitely, this is going to be definitely read in 2010. Definitely. Then the Dante Club by Matthew Pearl. The only reason I got this is because Dan Brown, the author of The Da Vinci Code, quoted this. And he said, Matthew Pearl is the new shining star of literary fiction, a heady, in intentive, and immediate, immensely gifted author with... Intricate plots, classical themes, and er eroded characters, but what's not to love? Basically, this takes place in 1865, and there's a series of murders that are inspired by um, Dante's Inferno. So, um, that just seemed really interesting, because Dante's Inferno is an awesome um, piece of literature, so that's pretty cool. And then, what's up? Kirsten, um... Oh, she, she was showing her book collection. She had read this. But it was under a different title. I think it was published as a different title. Um, I think. 
but it's Fall Leaves, the memoir of an unwanted Chinese daughter. But her book was um, by Adeline Nienma, but hers was called The Chinese Cinderella. But it's the same book, it's just under a different title. But this is um, a memoir. So, obviously it's a memoir of an unwanted Chinese daughter, as you know in China. When you're born a girl, you're, you would, you know, you're really not what they wanted. They want boys. So then, and then another one I'm going to read this year is Mortal Minds, The Nature of Right and Wrong, M Mark D. Hauser. This I bought at the library's book sale. This is just basically research and understanding of moral development in our society. We'll see how that goes. Speak Softly, She Can Hear by Pam Lewis. I bought this a long time ago. I never read it. I think this is a, yes, this is a debut author. Probably not now, because I bought it a long time ago, but um, let me see if there's a little summary. A Wild Run in the Cupboards by Ann Bauer is one I had started. I, like, got, like, a couple pages in, and then I just put it down, probably because I was going to read something else instead. But this was named one of the best books of the year by the Washington Post, Publishers Weekly, and Minneapolis Star Tribune. But it's about... Um, a child's descent into autism. So, and it's a fictional account. A uh, piece of cake by Cupcake Brown is a book I had bought around my birthday in October because um, people have said it was a really inspiring um, book, and I think I um, was discovered it when I was searching for um, the Push book, Push by Sapphire, which is now a movie called Precious. And it was kind of, sim it's almost similar in it, but, yeah. I guess she, um, Cupcake Brown had a really hard life, and this is her memoir, which is exciting, because it, but the last one I have that I'm going to use is Plain Truth by Jodi Picoult. Another Jodi Picoult book I know, but this is, takes place in the Amish country, uh, the Amish community, and basically a young girl, she's 18, um, comes pregnant and they kill the baby and so it's again another investigative thing but it's interesting because it takes place in Amish community so that'll be really interesting to read that so those are the few books that I have that I'm definitely going to use for the challenge for sure for sure definitely um tomorrow I'm getting on un unwind by Neil Schusterman I want to look at I might look at Witch and Wizard by James Patterson I don't know I'll see how much it costs because I've heard it's not as good as they hyped it up to be, which is a, dis a highly disappointing thing. So I'm definitely going to look at that one. And then Pay It Forward by Catherine Ryan Hyde, I want to see. And I think there's a couple more I was going to look at. But I don't remember. I have the list. So, yeah, if you're going to participate in the challenge, totally leave a comment so I can subscribe to your videos to see what you're reading. So, thanks for watching, and happy reading, everyone. Bye.